This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, VP and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Wherever you happen to be today in Southern California, we really appreciate your taking a little time to spend listening to this show today. My name is Ryan Stutz. I get a chance to hang out with Logan for an hour here. And Logan, I hope you've had a great week since we talked last. Yeah, I have. I'm here and I'm, I'm ready for another great show and uh, very excited to be back. How about yourself, Ron? Do you have a good week? Uh, not bad at all. 2022 is starting out really well. And uh, ho- hopefully 2022 is a better year than 2021 for <laughs> a, a lot of different reasons. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this show is all about getting you to and through retirement. If you're listening for the first time, welcome to the Logan Sadler family here. And if you are a regular listener, we appreciate your being here as well. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to get a discovery meeting going. That is a getting to know you session with Logan Sadler. That's not going to cost you a penny and not going to carry with it any kind of obligation. But again, you have to reach out with that phone call, 888-823-PLAN. That's good for a one-on-one conversation, no cost and no obligation. I'll give you that number again just a little while here. Uh, The IRS has discovered that they mailed out letters with incorrect data to many households who got the prepayment on their child tax credit in 2021. Now, Logan, this could create significant headaches for those families as they filed yeah. their taxes this spring, but the IRS isn't sure at this point how many families got the wrong information. It's kind of a ridiculous situation, and it seems that the burden is going to fall on those families that they yeah. got this stuff sent to uh, by mistake. Yeah, that's a, that's a oopsie there. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, that's something that... Uh, you know, I feel like there's been a lot of this stuff going around lately. Yeah. I know, uh, obviously, like we talk about on the show all the time, I do work with a lot of different tax professionals. And um, it's something where I know their job has gotten rather complicated, more complicated over the last few years with, you know, things like this. And then you have other things like, uh, you know, the PPP loans, then you had the stimulus stuff. You had a lot of different things going on for not only the person going to get their taxes done, but also the professionals. And, and now this, so, we, you know, who knows... Uh, like the IRS said here, who knows how many they sent that out to. That means it could be very few or it could be thousands, right? So that sounds like a big mistake. <laughs> and if they don't know how many got sent out, how's anybody I, else supposed to figure that out? I was glad you said that because I was kind of thinking, well, if they don't know, who's supposed to know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, the IRS is way behind anyway. So, yes. you know, there's all kinds of things going on right now. And uh, I know life is hard for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. But let's talk about market volatility, a uh, very popular subject on this show. Uh, Whenever the market is volatile, it inevitably causes people to ask questions about their investments. And I know you get these all the time. Let's talk about some of the conversations that you're likely to have during times of market volatility, like right now. Surely you have clients sometimes call during periods of volatility to ask if any changes ought to be made with their money. How do these conversations with you usually go, Logan? Yeah, that, that's a great point. And I, you know, one thing I kind of welcome as the advisor, when people come on board and decide to work with us, I think the biggest thing is, is that we're open to these conversations from time to time because there is typically changes that need to be made. I always say if you're in the same exact investment holdings as you were in probably 20 years ago, you know, there's probably a lot more different efficient things we could be doing now compared to then. So mm-hmm. you do need to be making changes from time to time and making sure that, of course, you're keeping up with what it is you're trying to accomplish and really making sure that you've identified goals and concerns. But I think what it really circles back around to and where this conversation with our clients typically goes is we do a lot of different reviews throughout the year. So we've, we talk pretty, pretty often. And so the most important thing is to make sure, has anything changed? You know, has, has your financial situation changed at all? Has your risk objectives changed? Are you now going from someone who is more conservative to now aggressive or vice versa? And that's really where a lot of the recommendations will come in to decide on if we do need to make a change. And more often than not, nothing has changed. It's just a client watching a little too much news and seeing that market volatility that does, you know, it worries everybody. And so what the most important thing as the advisor is for us to be there to make sure and just kind of reassure that 
we're still in the best investments we needed to meet our goals. But again, making sure again, that we have reassessed our risk objectives and making sure that we're sticking to the investment plan. I know that a lot of people, uh, you know, follow this stuff day to day and stress themselves out to no end and uh, unnecessarily. Uh, Have you ever had anyone reach out to say that they need to get out of the market, but you know that's not the best approach for them? How do you handle that? Yeah, that's, you know, that's a conversation that does happen time to time. And I think the biggest thing that, again, you know, watching TV or watching the news nowadays or checking it on your phones, I mean, you could see the market pretty, pretty quick, right? (laughs) Wherever you look, it's on, on the TV or it's somewhere. So, I think the biggest thing is what that does is it does cause a little more panic. And what it causes people to do is kind of sometimes not think within reason or sometimes just kind of get that panic feel like like you said here where, all right, I'm going to get everything out of the market. I always asked a few things with that. What are we going to do with the money? You know, I think the biggest thing is, is, okay, we could put it into cash or the bank. And the biggest problem with that is, as you guys know, listen to the show over and over me saying it, is, you know, we have to look at inflation now. So now we have another risk thrown into the bucket of now we're not making any money, but it could potentially still be losing money. So I think the biggest thing is when you're looking at getting out of the market is you want to make sure it's the right move. And what I always say is the biggest thing is why people get out of the market is typically because they don't have that investment plan and they've never really sat down and got to understand what their risk really is. And that's one thing we feel we do very well with our clients is because it's a very important thing. I think risk is really more important than returns. You know, I think a lot of people focus on how good the upside is, but not a lot of people focus on the downside. And what I always say is as often as the upside does happen, right? Mostly years, the the stock market is positive in a lot of situations, but there's also those years where it's negative. So it's one thing where I like to rely on statistics and data. And the data shows that typically if we stay in, in a comfortable portfolio where we've identified our risk, if we stay in the market, it's typically a better outcome in the long term for the client. And being able to kind of show them that with some data is typically kind of the best way to, again, just kind of calm them down and reassure them that we're still in the best best, uh, best investment possible for what we're trying to accomplish. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Again, Logan's number, if you'd like to have a one-on-one conversation with him, is 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. We're talking about market volatility on today's show. And of course, that is a topic that we address often. Logan, let's look at the other side of that coin. Uh, What about clients who ask if uh, this is a good time to buy during periods of volatility. You get that phone call from a lot of folks uh, when uh, the market is rather volatile? Yeah, you know, we do get those calls. And a lot of our clients, like I always say, we do set good expectations of of risk and performance and all these other things. But one of the most important things is is that a lot of people say when the market dips, it might be a good time to put money in, right? That's, that's what a lot of those books, a lot of the advisors like myself out here talking. Yeah. We really, uh, you know, welcome that idea because it typically is a good time to quote unquote, you know, get a half price, right? If the market's down half fifty percent, get in half price. If it's down ten percent, get in. And that's the thing is the problem with that is most of the time people always say, "I'm not going to get in right now because the market's too high," mm-hmm. right? And then and then we hear this on the other end: the market starts to go down, or you get like the last few weeks, you get a little bit of volatility in there. What tends to happen is clients say, well, I don't think now is a good time to get in because it's a little volatile. And so, you know, the biggest thing is it's always one way or the other. But I do have a lot of clients where it is, uh, you know, being able to kind of meet with them and show them that, hey, if we put a little money in extra here or there throughout your planning process when on these dips, it really does make a huge difference in the long term. And again, we're not market timers or, or any of that. But one of the biggest things is if there is a circumstance out there like a market volatility or a volatile market, it might be a good idea to put some money in. And we do have a lot of clients that do do definitely take advantage of that. I know that uh, Regary Financial has been around since the very uh, beginning of time, and <laughs> you've been doing it. You've been doing this for a very long time as well. I'm wondering when the market is volatile. Do you hear from a lot of new folks who are suddenly looking for a new advisor, or or maybe they're looking for help from an advisor for the very first time? Yeah, it's funny you bring that up because that is when our phone tends to ring a lot more often during volatile markets, and it's not clients typically calling to panic or any of that. It's typically uh, other people we've talked to throughout the years or new clients who have heard the radio show or came to an event and uh, they don't feel they're getting the proper service from their advisor. They don't feel that, that, uh, like I said in the earlier segment, a lot of people tend to 
you know, panic call and things of that sort when they don't know their own risk or know their own investment profile. And that's typically when people are calling us because they do know that we take the time to get to understand them and their investment risk and really make sure we develop that, you know, thought out approach. And so our phone does typically ring pretty good during that time. And we do tend to bring on a lot of new clients dur- during market volatility because a lot of advisors, and again, not talking bad on any anyone specific, but a lot of advisors tend to shy away from volatility. Uh, when the market kind of goes negative, trust me, I understand it's not a very fun time to, to talk to everybody, but we take that as an opportunity to make sure we're reaching out just to be reassuring some of our clients and, and how things work. And again, going with the checklist, we kind of went over here in the beginning. But yes, we do typically bring on a lot of new clients during that volatility. And that's because, again, Regary Financial has been around for a long time. We understand markets go up and markets go down, but it's really more about developing that investment plan that people are comfortable with. And that's exactly one of the processes we start when you come in for that discovery meeting is getting to understand you and your family and making sure we've identified that proper risk to move forward. And that's exactly, like I said, what happens at that discovery meeting. I know a lot of people out there listening to the show today during this time of volatility may be interested in getting around and making that phone call. Maybe they've been listening to the show for quite some time and um, they're finally going to reach out and establish contact and arrange for one of those discovery meetings. And uh, when you get someone uh, together for a discovery meeting, how exactly is that conversation going to go? Yeah, exactly. So typically when you call into the show, it, we actually work virtually or, or in person. Uh, we do Zooms and phone calls and all the other fun stuff. But typically how it works is you give us a call at the number Ron's going to give you here in a second, leave a voicemail and we'll reach out to you within normally 24 hours. And you're going to come into one of our offices or via Zoom and we're going to sit down and really go into depth as far as what it is you're trying to accomplish, what your concerns are, and how if we could be a good fit, how we would be able to get you there. And it's as simple as that. When you call for the discovery meeting, it takes about an hour of your time, and we really take a deep dive into you and your retirement. And certainly no obligation attached to that at all, and there's no cost. 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN, your number to call to get one for yourself. Isn't it about time you reached out with that phone call? 888-823-PLAN. That's uh, technically 888-823-7526, but the easy way to remember it is by using the word plan because that is so important. 888-823-PLAN. You're listening to The Financial Beat, and the beat will go on in just one moment. We'll be right back. We all know Congress has approved trillions of dollars in spending the past year with stimulus packages, infrastructure plans, and other programs. It's all on top of the tens of trillions of dollars of debt our nation already owes, yet we're living with some of the lowest tax rates in history. Now, how long do you think that's going to last? Learn how you can prepare for future tax implications by watching Logan Sadler of Regary Financial's exclusive webinar, How Tax Planning Changes Through the Four Stages of Retirement. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000, and we'll text you back a link to the webinar right away. Text ADVICE to 21000 and make sure you don't have to pay a cent more in taxes than you have to. To access the free webinar right now, text ADVICE to 21000. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show because we have some important information coming up. Welcome back to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Offices in Hemet and Redlands, wherever you happen to be in Southern California. There's a location that's convenient for you, or you can have a conversation via Zoom. A lot of people do these days. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to get a discovery meeting going. Kind of a getting-to-know-you session that won't cost you anything and won't obligate you to do anything beyond that. That's 888-823-PLAN. Remember Logan Sadler, same guy you hear on the radio, works with all three generations of some of the client families at Regary. Many clients have been with the firm for more than a quarter of a century, and Logan Sadler is a fiduciary, which means that he has your best interest at heart. And if you'd like to have a conversation one more time, that number is 888-823-PLAN. 
Uh, Logan, you know, every week we talk about these crazy news stories, and uh, I'm wondering if you saw this story about a woman in Texas who got arrested after accosting a mother in the checkout line at Walmart. Why do so many things crazy happen at Walmart? At any rate, (laughs) she asked if she could buy one of the mother's two children for $250,000. Wow. The mom said no, of course. The woman increased the offer to $500,000, which the mother also turned down before the woman threatened to just take the child. That was all wow. in the checkout line at Walmart. That is amazing. Yeah, that that's amazing, creepy, all, all that, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Now you don't see very many people walking around offering to buy children, but she was offering a offering a pretty uh, pretty hefty amount. But that is just such a strange story. Yeah, wow. I mean, I you know I wouldn't sell my kids for any amount of money, and I think you know yeah. <laughs> the great majority of folks out there feel exactly the same way. But. Yeah, exa- I mean, I don't want to say mom of the year or anything for refusing a half a million, but I mean, no. you know, hey, way to way to way to stay strong. Pretty typical response, I guess. I would think yes. <laughs> well, let's. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she did the math in her head and figured, well, it's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll call it fuzzy math. Uh, a lot of investors and advisors, in fact, fall victim them to fuzzy math in retirement planning, and uh, I want you to explain why somebody making these statements might be using fuzzy math. First of all, if someone says, the mutual funds that I'm invested in have averaged 7% annual growth for the last five years, and I'm perfectly happy with that return moving forward. What's wrong with that math? <laughs> yeah, that, you know, uh, this is something that I, I have definitely heard a lot over the last few years. And one thing I always kind of come back to is over these last five years, if you haven't been making money in the market, you're just you're just completely in the wrong thing, right? I mean, you look at basically every sector across the board over the last five years has performed pretty good. I mean, you know, it's not, not unheard of to see a 7% annual growth rate over the last five years. Now, where the the problem with that math is when it comes to retirement planning is if you're going to try taking out around 7% per year, let's say, or, or participate in a guaranteed 7% annual growth over a five-year period, you really got to look at what you're saying because that was over the last five years. The last five years have, has been one of the best five-year periods and you know one of the top ones in history. And so one thing I always like to say to that is what happens when we have one of those five-year down periods. You know, I think a lot of people don't think that way where they think, well, you know, the market was a little volatile at the end of 2018. We did have a little volatility in, in 2020 with COVID, but you look at the overall aspect, none of those none of those market volatility spells lasted very long, right? They were weeks or just a month in some cases. So what I always like to look at is you got to look at those, you know, situations where like the early 2000s or the mid 2000s where we had those two big corrections as well as in the late 80s. You know, some of these things last 2 years, 3 years, 4 years and if you're just part, if you're projecting a 7% return on your investment, that's something where that's a pretty good return to be projecting on. Yeah. So there's a good chance that you might be running out of money pretty fastly if you're not really calculating in what that has historically averaged, because you probably won't be retired for just five years, I wouldn't think, right? You'll probably be retired for a little longer than five years. So you really got to look at the overall math. And again, that does sound like fuzzy math and uh, wishful thinking. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Logan, uh, there are some people who say it's definitely best to wait until I'm 70 to start my Social Security so that I can get the biggest monthly amount possible. Now, that is not crazy to say that. A lot of people think mm-hmm. that. And, yeah. uh, you know, in, in uh, I guess a lot of cases that is absolutely true, but sometimes it's not. Yeah, you know, uh, Social Security is always a tough one, and I always say that on here, but it is because there is a lot of different times where it does make mathematical sense or emotional sense or, or a lot of different reasons to take it at certain ages. And it really all comes down to that person. And I'm going to tell you a little story here about a client that I have. Uh, she's been with us a few years now, and it's one of these things where she was able to come in, sit down, and she was finally going to be implementing this final stage of the retirement plan and kind of pulling the trigger to, to take that leap. Yeah. It was it was quite funny because we were kind of getting talking and she's really excited. We always, you know, have been planning for this moment with her for a while and she was more than ready and kind of understood everything. The only thing we really didn't cover too much on was when we were going to take Social Security because she still had a good income and we were kind of waiting until this stage and she was around 66, okay? Mm-hmm. 
she had about a million four in retirement accounts with us and, and different types of investment accounts with us. And uh, so she has done very well in putting away money, has a rental house as well, and then also had Social Security. So what she said is, I think I'm going to wait to take Social Security until age 70 because it goes from just roughly numbers. It goes from like 2300 a month to almost 3000 a month. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's do some math and see why we would do that. She wasn't married. And all she had was she had three kids that she wanted her money to go to. Right. So the simple math kind of made sense of what she was saying as far as waiting to delay to get the higher income. But what I was able to show her is she was going to be spending tens and thousands of dollars over the next four years of her own money mm-hmm. that doesn't get passed on to her kids. Right. So I was one of those... Or I, or that does get passed on to her kids. Her social security at that point didn't get passed on to her kids. Yeah. So it was one of those things where I was like, why don't we take social security now and take less out of your money that will then go to the kids? And I was able to show her mathematically how, like I said, it was tens of thousands of dollars difference that we were able to leave to her heirs if she were to pass away, unlike social security that didn't go to the heirs. So there's a lot of these little examples I can give you over and over again in, in different circumstances where it just makes makes sense at different times to take Social Security, and I always recommend sitting down with a professional and looking at your options. I know you often talk about taking a deep dive into somebody's situation, and that's a perfect example of that. You know, she Mm -hmm. never would have known that had you not delved into it and figured it out for her so that she's not using this fuzzy math. Uh, How how about (laughs) someone who says, I'm currently saving for retirement, but I won't need to do that once I'm actually retired. So I won't need as much income in retirement as I do now. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, I, I kind of get where the person's going. I kind of get that train of thought, right? You know, okay, if I'm putting away 10000 a year in my retirement accounts, that's technically if I'm making 100000 I probably could live off of ninety because I'm not putting that money away. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that, again, that's fuzzy math because it does make sense on some point. Now, here's where it doesn't because a lot of you guys out there, and I'm talking to all you listening to the show, a lot of you guys, when you retire you guys will spend probably more money in retirement than you might have thought. A lot of you guys are very active. And I know if it was myself, if I'm home every day, you know, I'm going to be going out to a nice breakfast. I'll be going to see the kids, the grandkids, you know, bowling, golfing, all that stuff that involves activity and money. Okay. And traveling. Uh, And traveling. (laughs) Exactly. So I, I see it all the time where people tend to spend those first few years of retirement. They typically tend to spend a little more than they thought because they're out doing things. They're out going a lot. Um, so it's something where you really do want to calculate exactly how much money you would need. Again, is the house paid off, uh, you know, car payments, all that stuff in there. And that'll help give you a little bit more of a realistic expectation because, you know, it might not be 100% of your income, but it's probably going to be pretty close uh, to 70 to 80% of your income is what you'll need in retirement to still be able to live that life you're living. And the other factor that some people don't think about is, you're putting money away into those 401ks and IRAs and getting that tax break, most of you. So now when we're not doing that anymore in retirement, we might be in a higher tax bracket and might be netting a little bit less money every month, right? So there's a lot of different variations where it always sounds more simple, but as you kind of dive into the logistics of the impacts of those decisions, it it can be very crucial. Gosh, there's so many things to think about uh, when it comes to retirement, and that's why uh, everybody needs a a good financial planner, such as yourself, to help them to and through the whole process. And we're talking about fuzzy math here, and I just want to ask you one more question, Logan. They say that I can take 4% out of my portfolio every year without running out of money. So I just follow that rule. I'm going to be fine. That doesn't necessarily make sense, does it? No, and you know what? I, you know, I'm guilty myself. The four percent rule is a is a really good historical rule of thumb to get an estimate of roughly what income could be generated off a portfolio. Now, it's not always the answer, though. Like you said, Ron, there's a lot more to this than just you know one size fits all. And uh, for those of you that don't know what the four percent rule is, essentially, is if if you have a million dollars in in an IRA, they're saying that you can draw forty thousand dollars per year and historically not run out of money, right? Mm-hmm. That should be a, a sustainable amount to where you should be able to average that or, or a little above that to keep your income steady. With that being said, here's what that, that 4% rule, when it was originally established, and it has been around a long time, really when it was established, it was more for like a 60-40 portfolio. So for those of you listening that said, what the heck did he just say? 60% equities, right? So let's say 60% stocks, 
40% bonds. That's traditionally what that 4% rule was established for. Mm -hmm. What that means is that that portfolio allocation has kept up with that return to generate historically that 4% uh, takeout for income. Now, with that being said, I have had a lot of clients that come in and they're not in a 60-40 portfolio and they're just going to follow the, the 4% rule. So, but that being said, if you're more conservative than the 60-40, which a lot of clients are, some of them only have 20% of their money in the market and the rest in bonds, or some of them have 40% in the market and the rest in bonds. So it's something where that 4% rule now wouldn't really be accurate historically, and you run a much higher risk of running out of money. Okay. So it's something where it's a lot more than just rule of thumbs in this business. And it's a lot more than just uh, past performance. You really do have to look at all the implications of these decisions and how they're going to impact you guys moving forward, not over a five-year period, but over a 10, 20, or 30-year time frame that you possibly could be retired. And, and again, that's why I always say, you know, my job is a lot more than just recommending a stock or having a really good actively managed ETF portfolio or any of that stuff. It's a lot more about looking at the big picture and understanding the implications of taxes, understanding estate planning and what, what to do and what not to do, and making sure that we're generating an income that's sustainable and that's going to last. And that's exactly what you get when you come in for that discovery meeting and if you decide to work with Gary Financial. Hey, write down this number if you haven't already or put it in your phone, whatever you need to do, 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. That is the number for Regary Financial. And you hear Logan Sadler on the radio every week on this show, and that's the person you're going to end up talking to in the discovery meeting that we mention so often. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to arrange it. Uh, Logan Sadler and the folks at Regary have convenient locations in Redlands and also Hemet, and be glad to meet you with you in uh, one of those locations or uh, have a Zoom meeting or maybe you might want to just start with a phone call. Either way, to arrange it, call 888-823-PLAN. It's not going to cost you anything and not going to carry with it any kind of obligation at all. Remember also that the folks at Regary have great partnerships with local attorneys, CPAs, mortgage lenders, real estate agents, even Medicare specialists to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things financial for their clients. A discovery meeting can be yours at no cost, so I want to call this number and make it happen. 888-823-PLAN. The Financial Beat will continue in just a moment with the one and only Logan Sadler. Mistakes happen. It's inevitable when you own a small business. But if you can prepare for them before they happen, well, that's the key to a successful business, isn't it? Logan Sadler and the team at Regary Financial have compiled a list of the five retirement stakes that small business owners commonly make. This special report provides you with insight into avoiding those mistakes and building the retirement that you desire. To get your free downloadable copy right now, text the word ADVICE to 21000. Again, just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. We'll not only show you what the top mistakes are, but also how you can avoid them. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. It's getting to know you time. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. And Logan, uh, it's time for our getting to know you segment of the show. And my question to you is, do you normally fall asleep easily or does it take you a while? Yeah, that's a great question. Those of you that uh, know me personally, um, I actually have a very hard time falling asleep. I'm one of those people that uh, I tend to think about my whole day and I tend to think about tomorrow's day and then five years from now and all that other stuff. So uh, I typically I, I typically am in bed between, I'd say, 9 and 10 o'clock. And I probably end up falling asleep around, I would say, closer to 12 to, to 1. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a late, a late night guy. Wow. Well, I'm a late night guy too, but uh, I can fall asleep just like that. <laughs> really? I, you know, I'm always, people always like tell me, oh, it's so cool that you could stay up late and get up early and do all that stuff. And it is, it is nice being able to have that option. But man, sometimes I would just really like to be able to go to bed, you know? Yeah, as soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm, I'm out usually. So, or, or can well, I'm be jealous. if I, I want to be. So, hey, you know, that's, that's something else. Well, you're one of those warriors, I guess, when you think about, you know, what you've what you did all day and what you're thinking about doing the next day and how you're going to help your clients, right? Absolutely. That's exactly what the, what the end goal is. <laughs> that is our getting to know you segment today. 
You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. More in a moment. At the end of the day, no one truly understands your financial wants and desires better than you. That's why it's important to have financial independence. This means you can work when you want, you know exactly where your income is coming from, and most importantly, your finances are stable. If this sounds like something you want, well, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000, and Logan Sadler and his team at Regary Financial can provide you with their free guide on achieving financial independence. The free guide will show you how to create an action plan for getting to where you want to be. It'll explain how to calculate a financial independence goal, and it'll define what an ice egg is and why it's so important. Download it now by texting the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Again, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 to gain your financial independence today. Did you know music is good for the heart? A study at a university in Italy showed that music helps promote a better cardiovascular system. But we also know that a sound financial plan is good for peace of mind. Keep listening to The Financial Beat so we can help you find a plan that both your head and your heart can agree on. The beat goes on, ladies and gentlemen. The Financial Beat is what we're talking about here. The show that helps you get to and through retirement, or at least has you think about some things that you need to do in order to get to and through retirement. The person you need to talk to is Logan Sadler, Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial and Hemet and Redlands. And uh, by the way, you can go to financialbeatradio.com to find out more. That's financialbeatradio.com, Regary Financial, the name of the business. Logan Sadler is the VP and Chief Investment Officer. And again, the phone number to call to get in touch and to arrange a discovery meeting is 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. That is a, a number that's easy to remember because of the word plan, and that's such a big part of everybody getting ready for retirement, 888-823-PLAN. Hey, Logan, I don't think there's anybody in the audience today who's expecting to get any financial advice from Shaquille O'Neal, but <laughs> we're going to do that in just a moment here. <laughs> but I just wanted to give you a little heads up on that, folks. That's a great teaser. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun fact of the week, Switzerland has the most millionaires per capita of any country in the world. Wow. 15% of the Swiss population has assets worth more than a million bucks. Australia wow. is a distant second at 9.4%. The United States is third at 8.8%. That's, that's wow. hard for me to imagine that 8.8% of the population in the United States is worth a million dollars or more. How about you? Yeah, that is a that is an interesting statistic. I think that's crazy that like you said, Switzerland. I mean, fifteen percent of yeah. the population, that is a high, high majority. Wow. Um wow, that you know, it is something though where some of these it is nice to see that we are up there obviously with the top three. Um, but yeah, wow, that's crazy. Even eight point eight percent in the US are of millionaires. That's that's a that's still pretty high, I would say. That's a lot of folks out there, that's for sure. Well, uh, you know, we, we mentioned Shaq a moment ago, and uh, not the kind of guy that you would expect to get a lot of financial advice from, but you know, there are some things that he has said and written over the years that that uh, make it possible. And let's talk about retirement planning with Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> this should be fun. Yeah. Let's see what we can learn about retirement planning from these Shaquille O'Neal quotes. Uh, one thing he said, and this one is, is the one I have the most difficulty imagining him saying this in conversation, but maybe he wrote it down at some point. Excellence is not a singular act, but a habit. You are what you repeatedly do. He's right about that. Yeah, that is a great quote, and like you said, I don't remember him. Uh, don't remember him saying that, but that's uh, that is a really good quote, and it is true. I think you know. I think a lot of people always like to. If I had to translate Shaq's quote into retirement planning, um, you know, a lot of people are that I see that are trying to hit a home run. You know, I think there's a lot of people out there that are just trying to find that one investment that's going to quadruple overnight, and they're going to build wealth really, really fast. And I think. That that's a very, you know, it does happen here and there, but the majority, the very, very high majority of people, they do it over a period of time. The average person builds wealth, does it by saving a little bit at a time. I always tell uh, some of our clients will bring in their kids from time to time, and their kids could be in their 20s, 30s, and 40s sometimes. 
And uh, I always tell them, you know, it's something where you can't just wake up with a million dollars. Most of the people I meet with that have millions or, or, or a million or multi millions is they have done it, you know, putting 200 a month away, then 500 a month away, then 1,000 a month away. They started doing that over a period of time and over 20 or 30 or 40 years. It is amazing how fast things compound if invested properly and if you stay consistent. And mm-hmm. I think that's what uh, Shaq, I think, is trying to say here is if you repeatedly do something, and I'm not talking about putting away five grand one time, you know, I think making sure sure that you stick to a budget and stick to that investment goal over the long run is again, that's most of the millionaires I'm meeting with. That's exactly how they were able to create their wealth was through 401ks, IRAs, and just being consistent with creating that habit of consistently putting away money. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're talking about retirement planning with Shaq and uh, everybody knows Shaq, a great basketball player. Mm -hmm. The guy is huge. He was an (laughs) immovable object, (laughs) you know, and you know, just a really tough guy. And he wants, said, I'm like taxes. Mess with me, and you're going to have to pay one way or the other. <laughs> I can definitely imagine that coming out of Shaq's mouth. That sounds a lot more like him, doesn't it? <laughs> it uh, does. <laughs> that's great, and that's really easy to kind of translate into financials there, obviously, because he already let it in there with taxes. But uh, that's true. There are many different types of investment accounts that are that are really all treated differently from a tax perspective. The 401k IRA is where you get a tax deduction now, but you pay taxes later. The Roth IRA, and I know we've talked about that one quite a bit on the show, one of my favorite things to talk about. The Roth IRA is where you get no no deduction now, but you don't pay any taxes later. Yeah. Okay, that's one of those things where uh, in retirement planning, having some tax free money down the road is something that's very valuable. Um, and then there's also other stuff like uh, tax accounts where basically you kind of pay as you go on capital gains or dividends. And those are what we call taxable. So those are where you get a little bit more tax control. So there is about three different ways that you get to choose. And that's right, you get to choose. Uncle Sam is nice and lets you choose how you want to pay taxes mm-hmm. when you're investing your money. And so it's really important to know um, how and what your account is taxed at, and if there's anything efficient you could do ahead of time on how to really get a game plan together to just make sure that you're getting the most out of that money you can over the long run. Side note here, I know you're into sports uh, just mm-hmm. like I am, and do uh, you ever see the movie Blue Chips? Yeah, I have. Yeah, isn't that a great movie? Great movie, great Shaq, movie. Jack in there, Penny Hardaway, a lot of other yes. uh, players are in there, Nick Nolte. Uh, yeah. Ter- terrific job playing that Bob Knight type character. So, oh, yeah. Well, know. speaking of Penny, I think you know a lot of people would have liked to have seen them play together a few more years, right? Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. And I wouldn't, you know, now that I've mentioned it, I wouldn't mind going back and watching that movie again to tell yeah. you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Nice little reminder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And some great music in that movie, too. Uh, yes. Uh, Shaq also said, the day that I stopped worrying about stats is the day I started winning. Oh, boy, that's true. It's all about the teamwork. It is so true. And I, you know, I think uh, with winning, I think, you know, being a business owner myself, I think that's really true. What I've seen as well is just kind of just start focusing on the client, focusing on your job. And those of you listening that don't own your own business that just that are working for somebody, it's, it stays true to that too. Uh, typically, if you just keep your head down and do something consistent over periods of time, it, it is pretty amazing when all of a sudden you wake up and, and you're winning. And I think uh, people, you know, translating this kind of more into Shaq's quote is a lot of people watch the market consistently and they overthink it. And their decisions are usually the decisions they usually make as the investor. They just add a lot of unnecessary stress to their life. You know, I, I think we've all seen those people that watch the market constantly and are super happy, high five, and when the market's up, and then they're very depressed and sad when the market's down. And that's just not the healthy way to do things. And really, uh, the most of the people that are very successful in the market, they think very long term and very understanding that it's not the win of the day. It's the win over a five year, over a 10 year, over a 20 year time frame is when you find out if you're really winning. So typically, uh, again, finding your investment and your risk tolerance, something that you're comfortable with and investing over the long run is typically when you start to see people win. And I think that is something that's so true. I've seen it time and time again. Again, I meet with lots of people and our firms met with lots of people throughout the years and the most successful people are typically the ones that are able to kind of keep their heads down and weather the storm if you will uh, during those not so fun market times to see the advantage long term and don't worry so much about the stats on a daily basis that's yep, for sure it's true uh, it's true. one more shack quote here for you and he said the only person who can really motivate you is you you think that's yeah. true logan 
Yeah, that's true. And that's funny coming again. That's not, that's funny coming from him. Obviously he was a motivated person, but, uh, you know, some people think he could have uh, worked harder in his professional career there, but, and some people think he did just enough. So, you know, I think the biggest thing, what he's trying to say with this quote is you could find tons of resources out there to help you learn about investing, planning books, blogs, YouTube videos. And of course, you know, the financial beat radio show, which you're listening to right now can all be great tools to learning about investing and learning what might be a great approach for you. A good advisor can help you put together a plan that's designed to accomplish your goals and achieve your dreams and really get something as customized as it needs to be. But when it really comes down to it, you know, we don't sign the paper for you. It's something that you have to do. It's something you have to be willing to actually implement the things you learn from those books, blog posts, and really be willing to reach out to a professional and follow that advice. And I think some people, uh, you know, we typically overthink things as humans, or we're thinking about, uh, I'll wait five years and do it or a year and do it. And I'm telling you, time slips away very, very fast. And so the one thing I like to pass on here that like, kind of like what Jack's saying is, those of you out there that have been thinking about getting that retirement plan together have, you know, you guys have put together a good portfolio over the years with the four. 401ks and IRAs and Roth IRAs and real estate, you know, it's really a time to, if you're approaching retirement, to really take take action and really come in. Let's sit down and let's go over what it is that you're concerned and really make sure we have a realistic retirement plan together. And, uh, you know, if you're one of those do-it-yourselfers that is, that is motivated by yourself, that's great. You know, the majority of people out there aren't motivated by ourselves. But at the end of the day, you need to have somebody, whether it's your spouse, you, or a financial advisor, and really making sure you're getting motivated to get ready for retirement or to start to start saving for retirement. Um, and it's really something that's very, very important. And again, that's part of my job as a financial advisor. When you guys come in, uh, we do things like this radio show, uh, podcast, and everything else, you know, webinars and all that to really help motivate people to get started for retirement. Of course, you know, we hope we get your business, but at the end of the day, it's really just about providing providing education and making sure you're making the right decisions for you. And that's exactly what we'll go over at the discovery meeting. When you give us a call at 888-823-PLAN, come in, sit down with me, spend an hour, and uh, we'll get you on your way to a, to a successful retirement. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Would you like a coach to help get you motivated and help you stay motivated? Logan Sadler is exactly that. He is the vice president and chief investment officer at Regary Financial, a financial coach, so to speak. And that number again is 888-823-PLAN. Call that number today. And remember also, as Logan mentioned, uh, he hosts educational seminars and webinars on estate planning, retirement income, taxes, and retirement at local universities universities and senior centers, as well as online. And of course, that's what a lot of it is all about, is educating folks. And if you'd like to have an up-close look at that, then call this number. You can arrange to have a discovery meeting, either uh, via Zoom or maybe in one of the convenient offices, 888-823-PLANT. As Logan just mentioned a moment ago, it's not going to cost you a penny, not going to obligate you to do anything beyond that at all. This is the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. We talk a lot about creating a better 401k, but are we actually taking steps to do so? Maybe it's time to stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. By texting the word ADVICE to 21000, Logan Sadler can provide you with his 401k action steps, a guide that provides you with powerful information that could potentially save you thousands in taxes and fees and put you one step ahead when it comes to your retirement. So text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 today. For this special report, text the word ADVICE to the number 21000. Do you hear that? That's the sound of a plan that has some serious issues. Ah, much better. That's the sound of a plan that was created by someone listening to the financial beat with Logan Sadler. So which sound is your financial plan making? Welcome back to more of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. I'm Ron Stutz, hanging out with Logan for a while here, as usual. And Logan's office is in Hemet and Redlands at Brigary Financial. You can call and get a discovery meeting going. 
There's no charge for this and no obligation. 888-823-PLAN. You want to talk about getting to and through retirement? I would strongly suggest you give Logan Sadler's office a call today and arrange that. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. As I mentioned before on this show, Logan Sadler and the folks at McGarry have great partnership with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists, the whole gamut to help offer well-rounded guidance in all things having to do with getting you to and through retirement. Again, the number to call is 888-823-PLAN. That will be good for a one-on-one discussion about your individual situation. And since we're all different, that is so darn important. Hey, Logan, I got a quote of the week here for you from Henny Youngman, really funny guy a long time ago. Uh, He's been gone a while, but he left behind some great quotes. And here's one that I like. I've got all the money I'll ever need if I die by four (laughs) o'clock. You know, uh, surprisingly, that actually sounds like a lot of people's retirement plans I've met with here and there throughout the years. (laughs) You you know, I had this one client, Ron, it's very similar to that quote. They had they had about 100 grand. And uh, he said, you know, I'm just going to take 10,000 a year out for 10 years. Yeah. And I was like, well, perfect. What what happens after the 10 years? He goes, well, I'm out of money. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> that doesn't sound like the, like the logistics are in your favor. But no, it, it, you know, people people do think like this time to time. Not not everyone, of course, but there is uh, there is people here and there. That, that's a funny quote. Yeah. Henny Youngman's a, a guy that, you know, a lot of comedians, a lot of older comedians quote mm-hmm. him as an inspiration for them. You know, so yeah, well, classic. Take, take my wife, please. I guess that's probably his most famous line. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Take my wife, please. Well, let's go to the mailbag here. We have some great questions. People have written in with uh, questions for Logan. And the first one is from Ray in Palm Desert. Ray says, I own four rental properties. All of them are paid off and all of them are currently rented. So they nice. provide me with a nice monthly income. That's a great situation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They provide it me is. with a nice monthly income, but I don't have very much in the way of liquid savings. Should I sell some of these properties so that I can invest in in something different that's more liquid and my cash is more accessible? Yeah, that's a that's a very great question, Ray. And you know, that's that's one thing. You know, unfortunately, I do see that a lot in the real estate world. A lot of people too do get very heavy into it. And uh, the problem is that it, at some point you do become you do have kind of a problem with liquidity. Like it sounds like you're having right now, where if you needed something, if something came up, you don't have a hundred grand or ten grand to go do something. Right? It's all tied up in the real estate. But I do think real estate's such a great asset class, especially like you said, where it's giving you a great income every month. And that's what real estate really is there for the long run. Yes, they do grow, but a lot of people buy real estate for the cash flow and the monthly income. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as to answer your question specifically, there, I don't know if I'd recommend selling one of the properties unless it was something you were considering doing because you maybe didn't want to be a landlord on all those properties anymore. Maybe you wanted to get rid of one of them and free up some cash. It might be a good idea. Maybe you had a bad tenant in there or just a lower income area or lower rent area. It might make some sense. The biggest problem you got to look at is, is taxes. That's the biggest thing where it comes down to if this makes sense or not is the tax situation. And again, it's got to be something you're wanting to do. I wouldn't necessarily say, let's just sell a house to create some cash. Because again, now we got to figure out how we're going to make up for that monthly income. So it's something where I would take a little bit more of a of a little more time than just a yes or no answer on this one to make sure we're getting it right for you. Because again, now selling, that's great. We have freed up some cash, but now we got to somehow make up that income and make sure we're not you know, going, going south on that end. So great question. I would love to sit down and further discuss that with you uh, because there is a little bit more to it than that. But that is something I do see with a lot of real estate investors where you know, sometimes we, we go too much in the cash flow arena and we kind of miss out on some of that liquidity uh, options we do need. I know there's cash out refis and things of that sort, but having liquid cash ready and re- easily accessible is something that's important. Ray, this sounds like a, a, a situation that requires a lot of thought and a lot of strategy. And uh, certainly, uh, I would recommend you call Logan Sadler's office and arrange to have a discovery meeting about all of that. And he can get into much more details, specifics um, in the conversation as well. If you do that, the number is 888-823-PLAN. 
Next question is from Lisa in Colton. Lisa says, I retired toward the end of last year and had planned to start my Social Security in a couple of months when I turned 65. But I picked up a handful of consulting gigs and I'm not sure that I'll need the Social Security anytime soon in order to pay my bills. Should I just defer it indefinitely? Yeah, that's a that's a great point, Lisa. And that is a prime example of sometimes where, yeah, it might be a great, great option to delay it because it might be something where uh, if you're getting by income wise now on these consulting jobs and it's going to be able to that gig's going to be able to support your lifestyle and live comfortably. If you can let that Social Security sit and keep growing and as well as your other investments, you know, that's something where it does make more sense than just taking it now because obviously that income will be more uh, down the road when you need it. So I would play that on kind of like a week by week, month, month by month basis where uh, if your consulting job is going to seem like it's going to be sufficient for your retirement plan at this point, I would delay it until it, until it's not. You know, I think that's one of the things where nice part about Social Security is is you do have the option when you want to take it between ages sixty two and seventy, and so you're right in that middle area where where we do have some time to delay if this consulting gig uh, does stay sufficient for cash flow. So at this time, I probably would recommend to to delay it at this point. Of course, there's other factors that come in, but just based off the information you gave me, I probably would delay it. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Brigary Financial. I'm Ryan Stutz. One more question today here, and it's from Roger, uh, who lives in Menifee. Roger says, I'm a regular listener to the show and enjoying it very much. We've determined that we'll need about $12,000 per month to live the way that we want to live in retirement. Pensions and Social Security benefits will probably get us to about $8,000. How do I determine how much we need to have saved in order to generate the other $4,000 a month? Yeah, that's a that's a really great question, Roger. I think, um, you know, first off, I like to really talk about how important it is that you do have such high pensions and, and Social Security to where, you know, securing about 8000 a month of those guaranteed income sources is, is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's a really great retirement plan to have that much of it in that solid income where we're not depending too much on just investments and, and, and market conditions and things of that sort. But to answer your question more directly, you know, the rule of thumb, like we talked about earlier, the 4% rule, if we were going to, you know, if we were going to use that rule in this scenario, it's saying we would need about 1.2 million to generate that extra $4,000 a month is kind of what, kind of what the estimate would be there. Of course, it depends on how we invest it. Uh, If it's in an annuity, if it's in the market, are we, are we more heavily weighted in bonds? But that's kind of a safe estimate of what you would roughly need uh, around that, around that $1 million, $1.2 million mark to generate generate 4000 a month sufficiently. Of course, it depends on exactly what age you are. So I'm assuming you're over 62 because Social Security. But those are some factors where I would say that's a great question. That's a lot of what we solve for at those discovery meetings when you come in and become part of our client process where that is exactly how you want to go to solve something. You want to look at how much money do I need to put away to generate this amount of income? And you're right on track there, Roger. But yeah, give me a call. I'd be happy to kind of dive more into depth than that and, and kind of get more of an understanding of what your risk tolerance is and what we're looking to do with the money to generate the income, but that's a that's a good rule of thumb there. A lot of great questions today from Roger and Lisa and Ray and uh, Logan Sadler, of course, can answer those questions on the radio here, given the information that you have provided. But there are lots of details, as he mentioned a moment ago, a lot of other factors that go into getting to and through retirement. So that's why it's so important to make the phone call to Logan's office and arrange a discovery meeting, a one-on-one talk with you and Logan Sadler. And Logan, you're not going to pass anybody off on anybody else. I know that they're going to have that conversation with you. What's that conversation going to be like? Yeah, like you said, Ron, don't pass you off on anybody else. When you come in, uh, you do actually sit down and meet with me or via Zoom or on the phone. And uh, we actually do just really take a deep dive into you. We do have what's called a three meeting process. So I know a lot of advisors, and again, they'll get you in the office and they want to move money or make decisions that day. Uh, Our discovery meeting really is all about getting to understand you. We actually talk kind of very little about overall investments and philosophies and things of that sort. It's really just more getting to understand who 
who you are, seeing if personality-wise we're a good fit, and also seeing where it is you're trying to go and what it is you're looking for an advisor to make sure, again, I'm a good fit for you as well. And that's really our discovery meeting. It's very, very laid back and very informative on just getting to understand you. We don't, we don't talk about moving your money or anything. We have a three-meeting process before any client decides to come on board to make sure, again, that we're covering everything we need to cover and making sure that it's a good fit. So there's no obligation, no pressure. Just give us a call. If you're uh, at that stage where you're trying to get a retirement plan together, you've gathered some assets and trying to figure out what is the best way for me to retire, generate income, and make this last, give us a call. I'd love to spend an hour with you. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-7526. As Logan just mentioned, no money's going to change hands. You're not going to obligate you to do anything at all. And this get-together is not going to cost you one penny. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. That number is for Regary Financial, offices in Hemet and Redlands. Again, one more time, 888-823-PLAN. So important to go ahead and make that phone call and have a conversation one-on-one with Logan about uh, what you need to do to get where you want to go in your retirement. 888-823-PLAN. You've been listening to the Financial Beat at Logan Sadler on the radio again. I'm Ron Stutz. Logan, it's been my pleasure to hang out with you for a while. Yeah, mine as well, Ron. I say this I say this time to time, but this is, to me is one of the best shows we've done in a long time where it just had some really good information on a lot of different, uh, different classifications of retirement planning. And as always, happy to be here and looking forward to next week. Join us again next time for the next edition of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler. The information provided is for educational purposes only and is not intended as investment advice for anyone. All information discussed is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. The views presented today are those of BD Financial Group and do not necessarily represent the views of Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC. The opinions expressed are subject to change without notice and do not constitute financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with your financial professional before executing any financial strategy. Investment advisory and financial planning services are offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Alpha Star and BD Financial Group are independent entities.